Unintended consequences. Uh, it's all part and parcel of, of electricity. It's the flow of waves. It's where energy, matter, and effect meet. And then when you start doing it at atomic levels, now you're talking. When you when you start doing it in the spectrum that you're in, or the, or the radio interference spectrum, where you're starting to use energies in order to exert forces at distances, now you're starting to really talk, using those forces in order to uh, accumulate and trigger other natural forces in a focused fashion. These are things that are worked on. And what it is actually is it's the interplay of Einstein's famous equation, E equals MC squared. Energy, which is wave forms, equals mass, which is matter as we know it, what makes our physical world, times a constant, the speed of light squared. And so what it means is everything in the universe is either in wave forms or it's in mass or, or it's matter. Or in transition. Or it's in transition. And so when you're pumping energy, new energy, high energy into matter, you're changing it. You're changing it into more matter or you're changing it into more energy. And the question becomes, how do you change it? That levers the energies involved, the inputs and the outputs. And so the airline industry, since we've been doing our talks, Christina, on the Wigner effect in the airline industry, um, I'm seeing more and more articles and information about how they are planning to build planes in the future. And I'd like Larry to talk about the plastic that was just discovered. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. Mm -hmm. And how they will have to return to old mechanics like the screw. They're either going to have to go forward one giant step or they're going to have to take one giant step backwards because the way they're building them right now is not going to work. Okay, so go backwards first. Okay, the first one's the backwards step. You go back to your heavier components. Okay, we're doing subsonic flight here. So there are a lot of different approaches to things, bell cranks and hard uh, control uh, arms. Thing, things that put direct mechanical contact and then size factors in place, reinforcements, those types of things. Tuck, tuck, things tuck. like worm gears. Yeah, worm gears. And worm gears are the ones you have to stay on top of assiduously and lubricate, which is the problem with them, which is what actually makes the other one easier. Uh, but you can do closed hydraulic assists called dash pots. Now, these things are not going to be quite as subject to the same problems that an active, a pressurized system would be uh, uh, susceptible to. You can also utilize uh, counter forces on surfaces the way they did on uh, rudders and uh, on uh, elevators on the uh, German aircraft in World War I and later. Those types of things will all work at subsonic speeds. Explain, now, explain how the pilots um, used to um, put the landing gear up and down from their seat. <coughs> well, uh, it's a question of did a system fail because in a backup you can literally can crank down certain types of, of landing gear and if you're going to have a failure in a hydraulic system, it is advisable to have some type of an other mechanical backup. It's a good way of going. So you've got all of, of those things. Now, the next point that we wanted to make was which, because I'm oh, trying to the, off it. Yes, the next point is in the future, that, pl ah, that plastic coating. Okay, the, the, how it is that they're going to need to build techniques available to them now and materials that have come down the road suddenly and, and in fascinating fashion that will make certain types of assemblies a, a bit more manageable in the future. As far as the overbuild goes, that's where you start putting the hydraulics inside of 
of heavy fittings and you have uh, heavy fittings that you aren't doing crimpings, what they're doing is they're doing joins. And those types of things are much, much less susceptible. And in the high pressure systems, those types of things will have a longer life duration. However, what you're really looking for is you're really looking for the Holy Grail. And the Holy Grail is what do you have around that can heal itself while all of these things are happening to it. So lo and behold, in a laboratory somewhere, uh, a young uh, associate researcher, somebody who's pretty new in the house, is making coffee while they're making a simple plastic and they forget in a step in the synthesis of this plastic. And lo and behold, a new plastic is developed. And this new plastic has some interesting properties. Um, it goes into three different states. It can be put into a fluid state. And in that fluid state, it can be made to flow, rejoin. And when brought back out of that fluid state, lo and behold, it's physical integral structure is back 100% where it started from. It's self-healing. Now, let me explain something to you about things, uh, miracles of this variety <laughs> that happen in laboratories, okay? Because these sorts of patents don't usually just suddenly occur because somebody was making coffee. That's not how it works. Most of this work was already done a long time ago, especially in plastics. So what you have to understand is, is that every now and then something's so good that it gets put on a shelf. One of the more obvious examples to me was the fact that water burns beautifully, can be made to aspirate in conjunction with a little bit of gasoline, and all of a sudden you've got something that really combusts, and not only does it really combust, but it combusts really clean. Now, what you've done is you've raised your efficiencies by like 600% in uh, both your consumption of, of the fluids and, and in your output. Uh, this is a bit of a problem for petroleum industry who's attempting to uh, sell you a product that they say is uh, a non-renewable product and that they want you all constantly worried about running out of. Two things there, it's renewable, and the other thing is, is it's better not to burn it because it actually is a poison, and that's the real program, is that they want to do some more eugenics with the fumes. Having said all of that, the patents for burning water in the internal combustion engine were shelved immediately upon their realization by the petroleum industry that they existed. They were brought off of the shelf during World War II, which is what made the Rolls-Royce Merlin engine such a beast. That thing burning water was a lot of horsepower, and it went very high, and it went very fast. It was a good thing. They put that patent back on the shelf at the end of World War II. I discovered it in uh, Mother Earth News back in the very early 70s, and I put it into a Camaro and drove it for five years. <laughs> This is how I know what the efficiencies are. This stuff works. These patents get shelved. It's all hidden in the background. And then when they are ready to finance yeah. the next factory and their control build and rollout, the miracle of the coffee cup occurs once again. And that young woman who discovered this magical uh, plastic on her coffee break got a B-plus in the class because she was a woman. Oh, and and, and the... her professor got the patent. <laughs> really? That's how it works. Wow. Yes, which was immediately handed back over to wherever it came from. Yeah, it went back on the shelf, right? <laughs> no, it's not off the shelf now. They actually put it in the public domain. They did a cut that with a couple of things. They oh. want these things out there now. Oh, now they're ready. They're ready, and they want to control the output and the production of it. So you have to go to yeah. one of the places where when you order it, you order 10,000 of them. Historically, when you look at self-healing materials, the largest scale at which you would see a healing event would be something on the order of maybe 100 microns. And that's a very small uh, dimension. It's something on the order of the width of a human hair. 
in the kinds of uh, experiments that we've done now, uh, we've been able to regenerate uh, impact damage uh, that exceeds, say, 35 to 40 millimeters in size scale. So that's, that's something about like that uh, compared to a single human hair. So it, it's really expanded by orders of magnitude the size scale at which you can see the regrowth and regenerated process happen. Yeah, this Wigner effect is really something else. Yes, and in sorting through these airline incidents, yeah, I keep coming across other stories that I feel could have a relation to what we're seeing or what we've been discussing today. And I wanted to run a few of these by you and just get your sure. input. Yeah. We've had a number of... Um, of serious crashes occurring. One in particular happened April 25th of 2014 in California where a FedEx truck collided with a college tour bus oh, yeah. that killed 10. Yeah. And yeah. there were a number of incidents around, around that same time of similar type events where the, the brakes went out on trucks. In this particular accident witnesses in a car that was sideswiped before the collision happened had told NBC Southern California that they had seen flames engulfing the FedEx truck before it hit the bus so we have some kind of like spontaneous combustion thing going on I I don't know but we've had a number of other curious events also happening in California and four of them happened just in the LA area all on the same block where the brakes went out in police cars that led to crashes this story was May 10th so again around the same time for the second time in a week and the fourth time in two months the LAPD was in mourning after one of their own was killed in a traffic collision the latest crash occurred when a cement truck collided with a vehicle being driven by an off-duty detective Friday afternoon. This was in the 1000 block of Loma Vista Drive. And, well, you know, I, I've seen a lot of these uh, brake failures. It's hydraulic. It's the hydraulic system. Just like on the planes. Well, the hydraulics have also been responsible for a number of stuck roller coasters. Yep. The most recent I, I, one. Okay, much likelier on the roller coasters. We're Some waiting, of those we're things, waiting for your camera. right? Exactly. Some of those things that are happening in LA, they were suspiciously much more like things that are happening in LA, if if you know what I mean. The police, three different police cars, same block. Same uh, block, four in in two months. Yeah, that, that's way too much. That's way too much on that location. That, that's the location key is the one on that one. That's an environmental indicator. Environmental? It's environmental in that it indicates something else. There is an artificiality to that environment that those yeah. cops drive into. They got set up or something. There's something on that block that makes it no go. Now, the L.A. area, in fact, several areas in California had have, have had a number of epic water main breaks now that's absolutely believable and those things are definitely going to be from this effect and what's going on with that also the way that the water pipes in los angeles were made which is with asbestos that's the other thing to know um so the uh two of those things are going on there's another thing happening in la with water pipes yeah when larry's finished i'll tell you now, go ahead. The only thing I was going to say is with the police look for events where they're widely distributed, those those are the ones that aren't going to be because something's happening there. 